Well, we are a little bit more positive about the German economy than, than some others. We, we don't think Germany is a sick man of Europe like it was maybe 20 years ago, a phrase that, that our economists coined at the time. Uh, we do think there is a difficult patch coming up, maybe three or four difficult quarters, but we do think that there is uh, you know, uh, improvement uh, towards the middle of 2024. And I think some of the investors are looking through what is uh, through the next couple of quarters uh, and, and see the recovery potential in 2024. What makes you more optimistic? If you talk to Germans on the ground, I think everybody has like their own story to sing about um, like what is not working in that country. Yeah, I mean, what's what's difficult or different to, to the history is, uh, first of all, we've got full employment. Uh, so that is something that is materially different from the, the last crisis we had in Germany. Um, uh, that, that, is, that is a big difference. And uh, secondly, the, the German economy is really based on the German Mittelstand. So it's not all about cars. It's not all about, you know, big cap goods uh, companies exporting, which clearly have a difficult time with China and with the U.S. manufacturing right now. But there is the, the German economy lives from uh, the, the diversity. And that, that's something we, well, that's why we like mid-caps as well, because some of these Mittelstadt companies do become small and mid-caps that are then listed on the stock market. And that's where we see some potential. Yeah, that brings me directly to the mid-cap question. So what, how are mid-caps faring in that environment? They might tentatively not have the same pricing power as the big ones, but um, what's your assessment? Well, first of all, mid-caps in higher interest rate environments, or when interest rates are increasing, tend to do uh, worse than large caps, and that's something we've seen this year. Mid-caps have underperformed because a lot of them are growth companies, so where you have the cash flows uh, further in the future and are now discounted at a higher rate, which, is, uh, which means the valuation of these uh, mid-caps comes down. That is something we've already seen, especially over the summer. A lot of the cap goods have derated. Um, but uh, again, we, we think you know some of them are really attractive. Now, Germany is attractive as a country. It's trading on 11 times P on average compared to 12 times for Europe, 19 times in the US. So a lot of this is reflected, and we're now looking at uh, picking up some of these uh, attractive mid-caps. Uh, let's trim down to the sectors, because um, I think it's interesting that you, you make a division in when it comes to consumption uh, values, because clearly retail as such is not very attractive given the high interest rates, but there are pockets which are still attractive? Yeah, this is something we talked about last year as well. We think there's a general shift since the end of COVID from buying goods to buying services. So one uh, industry that we like a lot is the live entertainment industry. And here our topic is CTS Eventim, the European leader in ticketing. We see uh, a boom in live entertainment in the US. Uh, this is the third year that they're running about 100% above uh, pre-COVID levels. And this is also something we see in Europe. Slightly with a lag because the big artists that are, that are drawing a lot of people like Taylor Swift uh, they're coming to Europe after having toured the US but give, this gives a nice visibility for the next three to four years for the European life entertainment industry we think uh, some or a lot of uh, consumers are also bored from sitting at home and there's still uh, some working from home when they go out they want to go out big and they're not hesitating to pay higher prices for ticketing and go to more concerts than uh, previously um, 